Um, our next, next speaker, Saya uh, Solier, is, um, has a background in development studies, works at the Media Lab Prado, uh, and will tell us all about uh, the Participa Lab and the Decide uh, Madrid project. Um, so you have 15 minutes. Yeah, I have 15 minutes, so I'm going to go straight forward. So thank you for the invitation. Uh, I slightly changed the, the topics of my, of my presentation because we're still in our research triangulating the, the evidence. So today I'm going to speak about Decide Madrid, the platform that enhances participatory democracy. I have 15 minutes. You are going to wave at me five minutes before, no? Okay, I'm going to try to be quick. So what is Decide Madrid or Decide Madrid? It's an open source platform that allows citizen participation. Voting, debating, uh, deciding on participatory budgeting, and also making proposals that can go to referendum. It's a platform that has been launched in September 2015 by the City Hall of Madrid. And before uh, digging into uh, the analysis of the tool, the mechanism, and the challenges, I just want to rec recapitulate the context of its birth and its creation, because I think it would help you to understand and get a deeper perspective, political perspective of the, of the platform. So, 15 of May 2011, uh, some protesters in Madrid and in other cities are claiming for real democracy now. It became the Indignados movement, the 50M movement, or the Occupy movement. It took four years to have um, to, uh, to have uh, to enter to, uh, to have this activist enter in the in the official political arena. In fact, in 2015, we had like local election and citizen activists from this platform, uh, from this platform, from this movement, decided to create local parties at City Hall in Madrid, in Barcelona, in Zaragoza, in several cities, and to run for election. Uh, it was pretty disruptive and surprising because thanks to an extremely creative, creative uh, campaign, bottom-up, and distributed, Manuela Carmena, which was unknown one month before, got elected. And on, and, in, uh, and on her list, you had Pablo Soto, the Councillor of Participation. From the, maybe some of you know him, he's a hacker, a peer-to-peer -peer activist, a 50M activist, and really, uh, um, and his objective is to allow citizens to participate in, uh, in policy decision making without representative or without intermediaries. In fact, he's like very much influenced by the direct democracy in Switzerland and also by the network of collective intelligence. In the city hall, a participation and transparency offices is created and a couple of months later, I think one or two months, Decide Madrid came out. It was not finished, it was on progress, but they decided to launch right away. It's used console, it's a software, an open source software, and today, Decide Madrid, which I'm going to explain more in detail what it's about, is already in 16 countries and more than 60 cities, it's also adopted by university, and it is declared as a free technology, replicable, free and transparent. Uh, beside Consul, there's a big community of programmers that are going to meet a couple of week, in a couple of weeks in Madrid and are still developing and improving all over the platform. You can see it in GitHub. So I'm going to explain some of the tools and the mechanism that offer Decide Madrid as an open source platform, 
to improve and enhance democracy, participatory or direct democracy. I would present the tool uh, in crescendo. It means from the tool that, le that, that lets less room for power to citizen, from the tool that really gives lots of power to citizen. Okay? So I'm going to now go through the platform. And also I would detain my presentation because you have tools that are more, would say, top down, like consultative, and some tools are more bottom up. It means like really citizens have the power to propose policies and to propose changes. So first tool, beginning from the less room for power to citizen, you have this consultation and vote tools. I'm going to explain it. Uh, the, the city hall asked the citizens of Madrid if they were willing to reform one of the most mythical square, the Plaza España, the Spain Square, which would be the name. They said yes. The, in the platform, they asked which type of reform they wanted to, to, to have. They decided. Then citizens decided among many projects and then, finally, a big votation. You could see the vote in total. They had to decide in between two projects. So it has been a consultation and voting mechanism that has run through the um, platform. This is also uh, a tool or a mechanism that it is used to validate and to improve like Actually, they are working on the strategy of social and solidarity economy. They also work on the Human Charter of Madrid. So citizen users registered in the platform can vote, prioritize, but also co-create actions. This is a module that is still under development, but uh, soon on the platform you would have the possibility to edit a legal, uh, how to say, a legal text. Uh, so it has been tested with a mobility law, but it's still under development. So we are going to tools that um, are giving more power to citizens. So uh, you can, in the Cide Madrid platform, carry out participatory budgeting. Uh, the first edition, 60 million of euro were uh, given to citizens to decide on, upon. On the second year, 100 million um, uh, got uh, to be decided upon, upon citizens. 30 million at city level for projects with a city level scale. 70 million divided into 21 districts. Um, the, the, the equation for the division is important because it took into account the population but also the income per area, per, per inhabitant, uh, yeah, per capita. And uh, this allows uh, to uh, the, the participatory demo, uh, budget to be redistributive. It is important to participate in the budget because the budget is the main tool to make politics and policies uh, on the city hall. So I would go fast. Uh, it is very simple. You can do your proposal. Anyone can propose. And then you have to run for support in a second phase, OK? And then the proposals that are more supported go to technical revision. And then civil servants analyze the proposals uh, and budget them. And then you have a votation, OK? This is the main phase. I would not detain because it's, you have that on that way. So today, it's a very well-valued by citizen mechanism. Among the, it's the second edition already, 50% of participation more in the overall process, 67,000 uh, participants, uh, giving more than 300, uh, no, 3,000 uh, proposals. And what is really interesting is like you have a bunch of diverse people that are participating. It is ranging from individual participants, not organized, individual participants that thanks to this mechanism get organized and, uh, and are acquiring different uh, participation habits. 
local participation committee, NGOs, and also neighborhood organizers. Today, there's more than 500 projects under implementation thanks to this mechanism. Here, the tag cloud of the main uh, issues, sustainability, environment, mobility, urbanism, health. And I'm going to tackle the tool that gives the more power to people, the citizen proposal. Um, five minutes, I'm fine. So why it gives more power to people? Because any citizen can propose, and if it gets 27,000 support, it means 1% of the population of Madrid support through the digital platform, then it runs from a referendum. And if the referendum says yes, then it's binding for the government to implement it. Okay? So right now, Already two, two proposals came out, one Madrid 100% sustainable, and the other one the unique ticket for all transportation, because you have different tickets. So the first one is already under implementation. You have 40 meets about energetic matrix of, of Madrid, and it's very interesting. And the second one is under negotiation, but because it's not fully the competencies of the, of the city hall. Here you can see some of the, it was, it was called the La Gran Votación, the big votation. I mean, there were lots of advertisement in order to uh, advocate for citizens to vote. It was both digital, but also you could vote on a ballot, I think, in paper, classical vote on urn. So today, some of the figure, already 19,000 proposals are handled from 11,500 users in total, receiving 2 billion votes. This show an interesting energy of citizens to propose improvements, policies, ideas uh, for Madrid. But today, there's a challenge, because this is the most powerful uh, mechanism. It is like, beside these two proposals, today, no, there's 1% of the, of the proposal among these 19,000 that get more than 1,000 support. And to go to referendum, you have to reach 27,000. So I'm going to dig into this problem because in fact this problem has its logic. And it's important to overcome as it is the most, the tool that gives more power. First of all, I'm going to show you how it works. You are in the platform, you are verified, then you want to create a proposal. You just push the button, you create a proposal. And then, okay. The thing is, uh, there is a, a very strong will from the city hall not to filter, because they want the citizen to have the power with no intermediary. Which means that you create it, it is published. The other side of the coin is what? 50% of the proposal are too local, 10% are claims, and it's full of proposal that has no chance to run for referendums. Second of all, when you open the platform, you have a, the display of the most active platform, uh, of the most active uh, proposal of citizen of the day. At the beginning, it was the most voted, but they didn't want to favor the winners. So they changed the algorithm to be more neutral. Both ideas are to be more neutral, to be more impartial, to give more powers to citizens. The thing is, here you could see there's a tension between the neutrality that it is looked after by the city hall and the user experience. So the city hall is right now working on this, on this issue to make it an alive, an alive tool working on data visualization to, to, to make uh, the citizen uh, more willing to dig into their interest, also creating an algorithm that is fair, but also showing interest, creating a module community because there's 60, one third of the proposal are duplicated, so it is persons that are interested by the same issues, but they are not meeting and they are not adding their forces, improving the filters, 
and the UX. Our project that I'm working in in Media Lab is on that issue. It's to strengthen the digital community and to improve their participation. I showed you the digital, I mean, the, uh, the digital, uh, how do you say, reform that were taking place. And now what we are going with my team is to look and to understand what the behavior of this, um, of this community in order to strengthen this digital community. We carry out digital uh, social network analysis, data analysis, qualitative analysis. We don't have so much data because thanks, uh, fortunately, there's a very restrictive and protecting data policy for citizens, unfortunately for our research because we have to, to go a bit blind at some point. And what we could see in the participation in this tool is that there's no consolidated community this is such social network analysis, so we, 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 we pull lots of data to see if they had a community, a potential of gathering and impulsing a citizen uh, tool to reach the threshold of 17,000, no? But there were no consolidated communities, incipient communities were created ad hoc on a subject, on um, polemic issues, Lots of users only work on one of the mechanisms of the Cide Madrid, and most of them were not really aware of the rule of the game. Few users are very active, and troll, for, by chance, have left the platform. They were very active. Uh, most users had never participated before, and new actors are entering in the participatory process. It's, this is a very important point because it means that these digital tools, these digital uh, democracy platforms, are allowing new type of citizen to participate. It's not the classical participant of organization, activism, and so on. It's really a new type of profile. And uh, they are, from the qualitative interview that we made, seeing an opportunity to be heard and to participate in the improvement of the city. This is still in progress. This is uh, what we see, uh, we saw on the evidence. And our project had these challenges. How to transform this individualized and punctualized participation into a more sustained and deliberative participation and to build a stronger participatory democracy. It is too individual and too punctual, too punctual right now to really be sustainable on time. So something has to be done. Our project is going to explore that. I'm not going because I think I, I'm, I, I finished. Um, I'm not going to detail this slide in, in detail, but we, we can talk if you are interested. But we are going to try lots of strategy and tactics to strengthen digital community. We are going to see if this can be done only online or it has to have an offline uh, also um, space. And uh, we are going to, to dig really into this question because at some point, on all of its health, the communities and the dynamism doesn't transform into, into, uh, into the, the participation expected. So uh, we are going to publish, a, um, we are going to carry out uh, the process all over this month and probably publish a paper around May. If, if you are interested, just let me know and we would inform you of what was our learning and about strengthening digital communities. And this is it. because now you decide. This is a story. Also here, we have time for two questions. Anybody? If not, ah, here in the front, sorry. I find it's a f fantastic tool, but how do you avoid to give citizens that are digitally active more power than than the average citizens that are, that are obviously if you look at the figures not active but 
normally they would have the same uh, the same uh, weight in democracy as as the ones that are part of the digital community. Uh, maybe there's a figure that I I I, I didn't mention, but there's three hundred uh, sixty thousand people registered that are voters. Here are the proponents. So uh, it's a difficult question, I would say. Uh, what has been done in the City of Madrid is always to offer the offline uh, possibility to, 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 um, to participate. But it can be still discriminatory. I mean, you have the offices, you can hear, you can come, you can propose if you are not digitally, um, not literate, but interested, and you have these spaces. But I think it really comes into tension and it's one of the issues that we would, we would look. And also, what I would say also is that all the classical space of participation in Madrid, they feel endangered also because they think that an individual's individualized citizen participation are winning uh, on like classical but very deliberative, long time and time spending uh, construction of, 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 of uh, participatory and offline uh, spaces. So, no answer. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a, just a, yeah. a, a question. Um, you, you say that it's uh, now the, the next work to be done, it's how to um, incentive people so that they participate just not one time, uh, but in a st sustainable way. And of course, if there are 19,000 uh, proposals, uh, nobody sees anything. Uh, uh, and you, s you think that you have to work on data visualization and social networks. So for instance, do, do you uh, collaborate with uh, commercial social networks? That is, uh, is there a prolongation of uh, the debate and the proposals, for instance, on Facebook? so that you can, and how do you see your relationship with these networks? Uh, I would respond for myself because I don't want to, <laughs> to, to answer. Uh, first of all, they are using this network because they are the pervasive network. So you, how to say, you end, justif justify the mean, uh, you, it's, mm, but you won't make the community participate only in your platform. So they are using, yeah, they are using Facebook. I, I know that, for example, in Barcelona, they are not using Facebook, but, but in Madrid, yes. I don't know if I answered. Yeah? Yeah. Hi. Um, I was just wondering how this was funded, and also, whether politicians are scared or not? Um, it was funded by the City Hall. I guess, I mean, I'm, when I'm going to check, but it's, I think it has been uh, uh, totally funded by the City Hall. And I think uh, there is a will, I mean, um, Spain and Madrid has a very polarized debate. I mean, really, people from the right cannot even look at the two. So that there's a will to delegitimate uh, the two. So I would say they are scared. <laughs> because if not, they will not take into account. I mean, there's lots of yeah, attacks. Thank you very much.